One of the visions that I think we're seeing both realized and not realized, sort of anti-realized, is this idea of the read-write internet. The internet, as envisioned particularly by the creator of the web, Sir Tim Berners-Lee, is a place where anybody can publish anything. Anybody can share information. People have control over what's online, and people both give and take from the web. And there are plenty of ways to do this today. There are great platforms out there for building websites. There are great platforms out there for uh, publishing information about yourself and contributing to the web. There are some really exciting realizations of this idea. So Wikipedia, for example, I think is a great realization of the idea of the read-write internet. Uh, people use Wikipedia. People also contribute to Wikipedia. And the sum of all of our contributions to Wikipedia is this incredible body of knowledge that is much, much, much greater than any one of us could have contributed on our own. So that's this great and really incredible, I think very inspiring. You know, we use Wikipedia all the time, but I'm not sure we ever really stop to think about how important and how strange Wikipedia actually is. This is a crowdsourced encyclopedia. It's pretty much put traditional encyclopedias out of business, I think, but also just a really beautiful idea and sort of beautiful fruition of the ideas of the internet, that people can come together to build something together that is really useful. Um, and that is just the sum of a bunch of people's own individual knowledge and contributions. Now, on some level, though, we've also seen the sort of anti-realization of this particular idea in the sense of, you know, one way, uh, you know, there's a lot of read-only stuff on the internet. So sort of one way uh, delivery of, you know, uh, licensed content from creators to consumers and the internet sort of starting to look like a platform that's basically a, a sort of a souped up version of television. So that's, that's sort of the anti-realization of this effort. Now, Tim Berners-Lee has sort of continued to push in the direction that he originally envisioned with an internet that can be um, accessible to everybody, that everybody can contribute to, that everybody can create, and everybody can be a part of. And there's a couple of, of ways that that's coming to fruition. One is this idea of an internet that's much more distributed. So the client-server model of the internet, and to some degree cloud computing, and more and more centralized control ownership and sort of um, aggregation of computation and storage and information is on some level leaving us out in the cold. It makes it means that in order to publish things online, we have to work with some big company. We have to trust our data to, you know, uh, to the cloud or other things. And so that becomes a limitation um, in certain ways on what you can do online. And so part of what he's continued to work on is this idea of making the web more distributed. He's also continued to work on trying to make web uh, information more structured in the form of something that's referred to as the semantic web or sometimes web 3.0. The idea that the information online can become more and more useful, not just to humans who have these powerful sort of natural language processing abilities, but to computers through additional markup and additional structure that's embedded in the content of web documents itself. So, you know, this is a visionary who's still very much at work. Obviously, you know, the, the web was something that really sort of defined and um, sort of became an integral and incredibly important part of the internet itself, but it's something that's still very much sort of in flux today. And I think we'll see over the next few decades this play out. So can we grow and teach a new generation of people to interact more with the web, to contribute more to, with the web? Or will we see the web become more and more a, a platform for simply delivery of content um, from people that create it and own it to people that purchase it. So a one-way platform where more and more people are, again, sort of, sort of, you can think of it as sort of a glorified television, a broadcast medium where there's a small number of people that are using it to create things rather than a large number of people and a large number of people that are just consuming.